acidic ether cleavage. And so ethers are molecules with this general structure, and they are typically not reactive. So typically unreactive. And so this makes ethers useful as solvents. And so we use, see these used as sol solvents quite often in organic chemistry. Uh, tetrahydropuran, THF is one that you might have come across. Um, and so what I'm going to look at here, there was one reaction that ethers do undergo, and they will cleave uh, in strong enough acid. So I am going to give an example here, and we're going to take a look at um, another ether that's a common solvent. And so we've got a tert butyl group on one side, a methyl group on the other. So this is methyl tert butyl ether, or MTBE. And if we were to take this and heat it up, and I'm going to use an excess um, of either HBr or HI in heat, we would end up cleaving this ether, and what we would end up getting is two equivalents of alkyl halides. So we would end up with the tert butyl halide and with the methyl uh, halide. So I'm going to go ahead and draw these, and then we'll take a look at the mechanism. Okay, so X in this case would be either bromine or iodine. So we would get, if we had an excess of these acids, we would get both of those alkyl halides. Okay, and so how this reaction works, um, so let's just say for example, let's do this with HBr. So HBr is a strong acid, and of course the oxygen with its lone pairs of electrons can act as a base. So we can have this alcohol attacker acid, right, and breaking that uh, hydrogen bromine bond. And so what we're doing here is we're taking, we're making a good leaving group. And so we've protonated this oxygen. We have seen in previous reactions that protonated oxygens make pretty good leaving groups. Um, and in this case, we've got one side of the, the ether that's tertiary. So once we've got this good leaving group, it can do as good leaving groups do, and it can leave. And so what that will give us is a carbocation. So we'll have a carbocation from that tertiary side. Um, and this shouldn't be surprising. We know that tertiary alcohols and then tertiary alkyl halides also undergo SN1 reactions. And so that's what we're doing here. We're setting up an SN1 reaction on the tertiary side. Um, and we've generated bromine as a, as a uh, from this step here. And it's, we know that bromide ion is a nucleophile. So we can take that bromide and have it react with this really reactive cation, and that would give us this tertiary alkyl halide here. And we've also formed in the reaction, so right here we've lost a molecule of methanol. And so that molecule of methanol, we've got excess of acid, we're only gonna consider examples with excess. This can undergo its own reaction with some of that hydrobromic acid. So your alcohol can act as a base and pick up a proton. And so we're gonna make this into a good leaving group. So we've got this protonated alcohol as a good leaving group. And again, we've generated some bromide ion in solution. And so that can undergo reaction as well. And we would end up with the second equivalent of alkyl halide. Um, so the mechanism can take place, this acidic ether cleavage could be either SN1 so we see this first pathway as SN1, and that's because we have a tertiary carbon. Or if we have a primary uh, or methyl uh, carbon, then we can end up with an SN2 pathway, which is what we see here.